Welcome to Bruising Boxing. I'm your host, Raider Live, with you with another week. Uh, after watching last week, watching most of our predictions go down the tube on our long shots, James, it's not uh, happy smiles times for me when it comes to betting, but that's all right. It happens sometimes. That's why they call it gambling, not winning. With me, as always, is Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich, what's up? Well, the NBA trade deadline oh. just passed, and it looks like James Harden is going to Philadelphia and Ben Simmons is going to Brooklyn. This is huge for both teams. So uh, that's all I got. I am excited for the second half of the NBA. Well, my question to you is, how does that affect LeBron? Uh, exactly. Probably doesn't. All right. Probably doesn't. <laughs> but. All right. And with me, as always, is Judge Jimmy James. Judge, uh, we didn't do too good on the uh, long shots last week, but uh, it is what it is. How are you doing? Uh, you win some, you lose some. That's all right. We'll, we'll get them next time. Uh, doing pretty good, though. Uh, nothing really to report. Uh, it was off air, but you did get that soccer game correct, that draw. Well done. Hey. And then with us, as always, is uh, Matty Bush, Bush Light, uh, Beard Bush. I don't know what nickname we're going with for him up there yet. Uh, the man on probation has to scramble his IP address. What's up, Matty? How you doing? How are we all doing? I'm living up here in a blizzard right now in the at the North Wall. We have a blizzard going on, so the Glad North Wall in a blizzard. Yeah, uh, I'm at. That, the, I'm protecting you guys. Yeah, okay, reminds me of flashbacks Snow. of uh, riding with uh, you and the judge here in a blizzard going to your house. <laughs> so that was uh, that was some scary times. Scary times. I, I shouldn't survive that. Remember. But, <laughs> but anyway, all right. Uh, gentlemen, we got a long show here today. It's mainly news rich show today, and then uh, some reviews from uh, our predictions from last week. Uh, so, if you guys are ready to get to it, I'm ready to get to it. You guys ready? Get it on. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. I already opened my beer, but uh, cheers, gentlemen. Hey, cheers. Oh, look, you got bush light shock. Is that the only thing they sell up there in the blizzard, too? That's the only good thing. Ugh, couldn't find any PBR. They got that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move on with the show. Cruising news time, gentlemen. Lots of news to get to this week, including some big names and some uh, ridiculous statements. But uh, we're going to start right off the bat with uh, Eddie Hearn says that uh, Terrence Crawford should sign with the PBC. Really, he doesn't want him to sign with Matchroom, but he wants him. To, he said he should sign with the PBC. He says he doesn't think he could sign him to any big fights if he comes to the to match room. Uh, Filthy Rich, what do you think about this honesty from Eddie Hearn? Yeah, that's a key word there. I appreciate Eddie Hearn's honesty. I don't know why this guy gets booed at every fight, but I appreciate his honesty. If he can't bring, basically, it's the Errol Spence fight. If he can't bring that, then we're just wasting. You know what I mean when I say we? We're wasting uh, Terrence Crawford's career. Basically, we've been waiting for so long for this fight. If Terrence Crawford really is out of his contract with top rank, PBC is the spot to go. If you you still aren't guaranteed uh, uh, Errol Spence fight, but at least uh, there's something there. I do want to mention, too, there could be, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn maybe protecting a fighter or two. Maybe he's saying there's no big fight here because he's protecting his own welterweights. But um, on the surface, I like what Eddie Hearn has to offer here, what he is saying here about uh, Terrence Crawford going to the PBC. I think all of us agree with that. Yeah, I agree with it too. It'd be fun to see. But, uh, you know, he still has to get by Ugas too, which he may not get by. You don't get by Ugas. Spence doesn't get by Ugas. That Terrence Crawford fight might be worthless anyway. Well, not worthless, but less money anyway. James, what do you think? Uh, you're head of the Crawford Superfan Club. Where should Crawford go? Uh, I assume he's not going to go back to top rank anytime soon. Oh, obviously not. <laughs> no way. Not definitely not going back to Bob Merrim. That's like yeah, he's not white. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, the PBC it does make sense. Uh, I, as Rich just mentioned, I do appreciate the the candor by Eddie Hearn. I mean, if you're telling him right now, you can't. You're probably not going to be able to deliver the fights that you want. There's only a couple of names, and what's the point? Like, let's not waste our time. And obviously, Eddie Hearn is doing all right for himself. So he doesn't really need to have another uh, person in his stable, even at this, um, this type of a superstar. But uh, I mean, yeah, the PBC definitely would make it easier um, to get a Spence fight uh, 100%. But on that same token, why even be with a promotion at this point, you know, your value, you know, where you are. Obviously you've been in the game for quite a long time. 
do exactly what Canelo has been doing and just be your own promoter and do whatever you want. Like you don't need to sign with anybody at this point. You finally got a fight after you got out of it. Um, like just, just rock it, dude. Just, just go. That's what I, that's what I say. I say just, just fly solo. Matty Ice. Uh, or- this is a cold call. Whatever it is. Uh, I, I always get worried when I hear honesty and promoter in the same sentence, even though we had to say it, but, could uh, Eddie Hearn be thinking the same thing Bob Arum is that Terrence Crawford just isn't a payday like he seems like he should be? Could that be it? Like he feels like it doesn't make any money off of him, like Bob Arum says? No, I think Eddie Hearn actually is honest. And notoriously, Eddie Hearn puts on the best fights available that he can make. Like he does his best to make good fights. Um, I really like that idea of Crawford going out on his own, actually. Don't sign with anyone. James is hitting that right on the head. Crawford is established as arguably, you know, how you want to look at it. Maybe the best pound for pound fighter, you know, it depends on how you look at it. He could do whatever he wants. (laughs) Uh, Come on now. Uh, (laughs) But he could do whatever he wants. He could control his own destiny and go wherever he wants, take whatever fight. I still think that Spence fight probably never happens. Um, But yeah, go on your own, take all the other hard fights, pick up anything, you know, make some money in this. It's it's the prize fight in sport. Make your money, make your money live. Well, I'm surprised that more people don't go that route of Canelo uh, that just, sign two fight deals or one fight deals with promotions and stuff like that. We'll talk more about Canelo and that later, but I'm surprised more people don't do that. Kind of like the Mayweather approach. Mayweather just started his own promotion basically and makes hundred billion dollars a fight. You know, why don't uh, all these big fighters do that? And maybe you get these big fights happening more often. I don't know. Maybe that's just a way to go. Rich, you look like you had something to say in retort there. I mean, I would say if, you know, if we're going to throw it back to me for a quick second before we move on. But yeah, I think that, I think it's a good idea. I think the only like kind of problem with it is you need to be an established fighter. And if you're not guaranteeing yourself uh, big money and Eddie Hearn or Al Heyman is telling you, Hey, I can double your money, but you got to sign a three fight deal. I mean, this is the price fight. You got, you got to do that. So. Yeah. Well, we don't know if he's a prize fighter. You know, who is a prize fighter though? I do. Amir Khan. But he said in his press conference, baby, he's a prize fighter. That's what he does. So he fights Billy Dib. I can't. Prize I fighter. can't believe I did. <laughs> I did. Billy Dib. <laughs> I'm a prize fighter. I, I pay it for the money. That's what I do. All right. Uh, let's moving on here. Sean Porter uh, became uh, numero uno on my hate list all of a sudden, uh, even more than Billy Joe. Nah, not more than Billy Joe Saunders. But. Pretty bad when he says that Boots is overrated. My guy Boots, Rich. My guy Boots. My guy Boots <laughs> is overrated. James, I know you and me have uh, had many discussions about Boots where I say Boots is uh, a mini Crawford. Now he may be better in Crawford now, and you always tell me I'm ridiculous. But this has got to be a little ridiculous with Sean Porter, don't you agree? Uh, I agree with the state. I agree with the – with um, the ridiculousness of Sean Porter's statement. Um, I do think that Boots is a, a, like a Crawford clone. Uh, I still think Crawford would beat him, but it's still, you can't deny the skill. Like you watch him and he looks the same. It's super crazy. And then the fact that Porter has to say like, you're overrated. I, man, that's big words coming from the guy in the same, in the same division, right? Who just retired just got out of the game who won't you know what i mean like for me it doesn't it doesn't make much sense now if you want to go and do like all oh, the resume right yeah he doesn't have anybody on his thing i know someone's going to bring that up going to bring up the resume thing but still <laughs> it, it's it's still like you can't deny what your eyes see and this guy is you know joey i don't think he's overrated at all i think uh porter is a little uh i think he's porter's usually right in a lot of stuff i think he's wrong on this one i think boots is the real deal Hey, Crawford messed up his brain a little bit too much there. Uh, what do you think, uh, Rich? What was the quote that you saw from Boots that you were bringing up or in response? You got that? No, I don't. But uh, I think I we, we need to define what overrated means. And I think in Porter's case, I think he is saying that many people have him overrated. And I think that is what uh, Porter actually said. Now, well, let's break that down a bit. If people have uh, Boots Ennis ranked at like 
number five or number four or something. That is a bit crazy. Sean Porter may have this guy ranked at number 10, and that seems legit to me. So we don't – well, I know Porter just put out his top 10 welterweights, and he has Boots Ennis on there. He has him at, like, number – I think number five. I could be wrong. He's just saying many people have him overrated. I understand what he's saying. Resume, resume, resume. There, there you go, James. I'll drink to you. Uh, I'll throw a bag, boys. Yeah, well, that's the Terrence Crawford knock too. But anyway, uh, Boots's response was, "I heard you, uh, Sean Porter, said I was overrated. He was just saying I'm ready and too much for these guys. LOL. And you said you won't fight me. Yawning emoji. But keep that same energy, though. If I'm so overrated, come out of retirement and fight me. Now people retire and I'm overrated. He uh, put." Overrated in quotes and come out of quote unquote retirement unquote. So, Seabach, I know uh, you and me have talked about Boots before. I've told you Boots is my guy, uh, my up and comer. How ridiculous is this statement? And should Showtime come out of retirement and uh, fight Boots? Uh, no, I I think everything's misconstrued. Sean Porter is a gentleman. He's a uh, he he he's always well spoken. I think things just got turned around with his words. He, he likes Boots Ennis. He respects his skills. It's, I think it's just, it's a mix up of words. And honestly, I mean, maybe Porter's still feeling that itch to fight again. You know, he's still young enough, but I don't think that should happen. Um, and if they did, Porter probably win. Oh, I just said it. Boots would beat Porter. <laughs> Boots would beat Porter. He'd beat him. He'd beat him. Uh, I don't know. Sean, 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 Sean Porter's a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> yeah, well, he just got destroyed by Crawford, and uh, Boots is a Crawford clone. James, throw it back to you for last thought. I, we're talking uh, in the context of saying it's misconstrued. He was talking, this came up on who Thurman should fight next, um, and he is just bringing up that Boots is overrated, saying that he is just too hyped and just hasn't been in the ring with any world champions, but... I don't think that I, I still just disagree with the statement. I don't think he's overhyped. So, but if you want to talk about that, that's that's what he said on the uh, on the podcast. But Thurman ain't going to go after Boots. Thurman's going to go after someone else. Hundred percent. Everyone's scared of Boots. Give Boots a fight. Give him a title fight. Let's see him. Uh, let's see him rock. All right, moving on here. Uh, we talked a little bit about it last week. About Canelo had two choices to either. What was I can't remember what the other one was, but one of them was to fight Bevel and Triple G in a two-fight deal, and there was a one-fight deal with Charlo, I believe it was. Is that what we were talking about? That was his choices. It appears that he is closing in on the two-fight deal, the Bevel fight and the Triple G fight. Bevel would be on Cinco de Mayo, and Triple G would be on Mexican Independence Day for their third fight. Bach, what do you think? Uh, This is the one I think he should have chose, but I believe you said he should take the Charlo fight instead. If I'm wrong, uh, correct me. But I believe you said that. Uh, what do you think about him taking this two-fight deal and uh, having Triple G part three? I'm, I'm personally not a fan of it. I, you know, I have said I'd want the Charlo one. Just one fight deal with Charlo. But, uh, yeah, this, I don't know. B, we all know Bevel's boring. Yeah, Canelo. Kennel could make it entertaining or Bevel could make it really boring. And there's too many like pieces of the puzzle in play on this one because for this all to work out, Canelo, you know, he has to beat Bevel, which shouldn't be an issue. But then Golovkin also has to look good against Murata in his next fight. He has to look good. Even if he wins and it's not a good looking fight, that fight is still off the table. There's no money in it if Golovkin looks old, slow, and wins by a crappy decision, you know? There's too many pieces in that puzzle that don't work for me when you could have guaranteed money, a huge fight with one with Charlo. And that's my opinion on that. Well, I, I'm going to fight you on this. The fact that I thought Triple G looked a lot better in his last fight against Sir Matza or whatever. I can never pronounce his name. SZ or whatever. Think to that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can never pronounce names. But I thought he looked a lot better in this fight. And, you know, he, at worst, was 1-0-1 against Canelo, in my opinion. And I think most of our our opinions, he was 1-0-1 against Canelo. But a third fight with Triple G, he's going to be 40 years old when that fight happens. And maybe he just leaves it all on the table and stops dancing around and just, you know, leaves it out there. I don't know. It'd be be kind of fun to watch. I think they'd fight in a phone booth. 
but uh, go ahead. You got your hand raised. Yes, go ahead. But it's in the contract. It's like the way they have it placed. It says if Golovkin looks good, he can win. But if he doesn't look good, the fight is off. So I heard like, it was just he had to win. As I no, heard he just had no, to win. no, he has to look good. And hey, let's not talk about. Or let's not uh, pass Canelo beating Bevol either. I mean, Bevol is a very, very tough fighter to beat. And that's mm-hmm. a big. Yeah. That's one seventy five. That's a big. That outside of Better Beev, that's a that's a tough fight at one seventy five. Filthy Rich, what do you think of this? Uh, him taking the two fight deal over the one fight deal. So James, Maddie Bush, and myself all wanted the PBC deal. We all and we said that as fans. We think Charlo would be the better matchup against Canelo. Uh, Canelo is taking this deal. I've said it so many times. We may as well start drinking of this, but it's the risk reward balance. Uh, Charlo is too big of a risk. I think Charlo had the best chance of probably beating Canelo. He's taking the Bevel fight. Let's not. Yeah. I mean, you're right about not overlooking Bevel because sometimes you have to look vulnerable in order to get a big fight. And this is why Triple G looked, you know, average. I don't, it wasn't average, but he looked uh, beatable before he got the Canelo fight. That was a tricky, sneaky way to lure Canelo into this fight. Canelo's ducking Triple G. He's been ducking. He, at that time, for years. was yeah. ducking Triple G. He was a duck. They called him Cun Yellow. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> nothing on that. Now, look, so we got, we got, the, so we got the PBC out of the way. I wanted to. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about Bebo? Maybe luring him in, looking not so good. Sarameda was the guy. Now Thank let's you. move on to Triple G. As far as looking good goes, I don't think that matters because Canelo wants to beat this guy. If if Triple G looks good, Canelo might want to back out of this fight. But this, I'm not calling this a cakewalk, but. Uh, it might be the end of Triple G if he has to move up to 168 to fight Canelo because that's where that fight's going to take place mm-hmm. after the Murata fight. Nope. And it shouldn't yeah. be. You know, it, it, I don't know about that. It may be, I think it might maybe do a catch weight, but uh, I think it's for the 168 belt, right? So, I mean. I, I hope Golovkin wins. wins. Golovkin's never been a ring magazine champ. I hope he wins. I think uh, I think he's got a good shot. He's got a puncher's chance, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, what do you think? Uh, you apparently wanted the one fight deal as well. I was the only one, I guess, that wanted this two fight deal. But uh, I, I, I want to see Triple G get his revenge because he's, in my opinion, he's undefeated against Canelo. So, uh, but the scorecards don't say that because of them Adelaide Bird. So. Yeah. Well, I didn't want. I don't want the PBC fight. Just if your business science, that's a smarter move. I don't. I already stated. The Charlo fight will never happen. And I'm going to stand to it and I'm going to stick to it until I got to eat crow. Hopefully I never do. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if that's the one he's inching towards, Beevil's Beevil. He has come up in weight, but I don't really, Beevil's technical, but he is boring. It's going to be a boring fight. Um, I still think Triple G or uh, uh, Canelo is going to beat him. Uh, I do a uh, nonverbal binding on your contract talk there, Matty Bush. Um, Cause I don't think that's, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think if he just needs to win, cause at this point, Canelo is definitely not afraid of triple G for the third time, but um, he did look better against Sarameda. Granted that's now a year and a couple months removed. So you don't get no more. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. We'll see what, uh, Oh man, what is it? James. No, what's his name? Jonathan Banks. That was who I was trying to think of last week. It's yeah, driving last me crazy. Week. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Don't shush it. But yeah, I don't know. But Jonathan Banks is still keeping him on the defense. Has him still, you know, he's he's not going to have uh, issues with stamina probably, but he may have ring rust. So, I mean, hopefully we'll see what he does against Murata, but I don't think that's going to matter. If he beats Murata and this uh, beats Bevel, then it's going to be Canelo Triple G3. And let's just uh, hope that it's a good fight. Well, Jonathan Beggs definitely has a more aggressive style for Triple G, at least in the, what we've seen. Like, he's a lot more aggressive. What are you talking about? Di- Jonathan no, Beggs is a defensive no. fighter. He yeah, is, but I'm talking trainer. about strength-wise. Strength-wise, he's a lot G? stronger. He looked a lot bigger under Jonathan no, Beggs. No, 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 no. Triple G? <laughs> he looked a lot bigger. No, he in. didn't. Hold on. Let me jump in. Did Sarah everything on stamina. Let me jump in. Sarah made a moved up from 154 for this fight, so that's probably why he looked bigger. That's yes. all, that's all I can really say. Now, if that's Golovkin's last fight, that's one thing. But this will be an evenly matched fight. Murata's been like a top 
five ish middleweight over the last couple of years. So uh, I think Golovkin beats Murata. We'll get to that when it happens in March, but uh, that's all I got before you guys start screaming at yeah. Dr. Yeah, no, Raider over here. Yeah, no doubt. I said he looked bigger, he looked stronger, and I, I don't know. I, I thought he looked bigger and stronger. Uh, you that. said that his that he was that the training was dip, that he was more. Did you yeah. watch training was all, his first fight? I all thought they were talking about his training was about all about <laughs> mute him strength right and endurance. I thought mute him right I thought Jonathan Banks was the whole thing was about strength and endurance. About no, defense. no, yeah, defense, student rolling on his feet and having foot movement. I got fine. your back, Raider. You ain't got nothing. Thanks, Thanks, Let's, Let's go. go. Let's Let's go. go. Right on my All right. Fine. <laughs> Triple G is going to beat Canelo for the third time. Just so I hope know. so. I hope oh, so. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be cheering for him. It's going to be great. We're going to James's house. Oh, yeah. And you're going to bring that glove with you, Matty, uh, Matty Bush. Next. Oh, this, hey, this glove stays here. <laughs> All right. All right. Erickson Lubin <laughs> versus uh, Sebastian Fandora and Tony Harrison versus Sergio Garcia are both set for April 9th. Some good, decent fights in April. Uh, actually, this spring is looking pretty good for some fights every uh, week, except next week or this week for some reason. But uh, the whole spring looks pretty good. What do you guys feel about this Erickson Lubin versus uh, Sebastian Fedora and then Tony Harrison versus Sergio Garcia? Rich, we'll start with you. Uh, look, uh, Lubin has been – he's looking really good since his knockout against Jermel Charlo way back, what, two, three years ago now, something like that. Uh, Fundura looked, uh, they got him ranked places, but he's never had any real competition. I think, uh, it's not about prediction time or anything, but uh, it's a kind of a showcase fight. The towering inferno is like six foot five, weighs in at 154 pounds. So, I mean, that's a cool little fight. Tony Harrison's going up there in age, we'll see what he's had, what he has left in the tank, but uh, it's a story. Oh yeah, it's a story. That's why we're it's a story. Like, <laughs> it's nothing major, I don't think. All right, James, why don't you tell the story then? <laughs> well, I mean, I think this is a bit look. So Fandora and Garcia just fought, right? That was their last fight, and Garcia is well, a relatively, well, I don't know, like a Spanish fighter, I think. Um, and he came out and looked, he looked good against Fandora. I, I thought, I, I thought he was given putting up a fight against because most people get hit two, three times by Fandora in the, you know, the that uh i don't know look at the pictures man it looks so weird but they get hit and they get disrupted and all that mumbo jumbo man but he looked good i thought he looked good i mean he still lost by unanimous decision but um i mean i garcia is not lubin lubin is going to come out and do something so if garcia if lubin can can take some of the pages out of this book and bring this to fondura i think fondura is a a, an issue uh because eventually someone's going to chop that tree down uh and it's going to happen so I don't know, man. I think it's uh, it's interesting. I didn't think Lubin was going to get that big of a, a fight that quick, but mm, I think it's going to be good. It looks like we're going to be spending a lot of time at James' house this uh, yeah, spring. Yeah, boy. So, uh, uh, I make sure to uh, bring out the bust out the Tecate for uh, for this spring. We're going to be tecate it out yeah. by the time uh, summer hits. Yeah. Matty Bush, you going to uh, escape the North and come down and watch these fights with us here? And uh, oh, what do you, yeah. what's your opinions on them? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll escape the North as long as it's not snowing. But uh, I'd like to see, you know, and I didn't look this up, maybe James can now or may maybe later we'll talk about it. But I don't think the reach advantage with how tall Fondora is, or Fondora is at 6'5", Lubin has very long arms. And I guarantee the reach advantage is not as big as you think it is. And Lubin is educated. They call him the hammer for a reason. If you can put a straight, straight shot down the guts into the, the tall man and chop it down, oh, I think that's a great fight. And they could... There are a lot of fireworks in that fight, honestly. Maybe not a reach advantage, but to be able to throw a punch that high up there is a little different. No, you don't, need to hit, you, don't, you don't need to hit the head. You don't need to hit the head. There's a lot of body head. to hit. <laughs> You've hit your head plenty of times. <laughs> but, uh, let me, I guess, I don't know. I do want right. to mention, I, Sebastian uh, Fundura, this will be the first time he's the underdog in a fight. And I don't know... I, you know, I think he's just a showcase guy. Not, it's no knock on him, but like Erickson Lubin is really, really good. If it wasn't for mm -hmm. like that one punch knockout, that Charlo, that Jamel Charlo uh, fight could have went, that could have been a, like a bloodbath. So I, the winners coming up here are eventually going to get a Jamel Charlo fight. And at the end of the day, 
I hope that guy is what, what's his name? Who, who are we talking about here? Erickson Lubin. I want the hammer. I want the hammer <laughs> the to hammer. fight Jermel Charlo. I'd be really excited. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, no, I'm don't sorry. mute him. Yeah, I, I don't have mute power anymore. I lost yeah, he can just ahead. say it and I can do it. You don't have to say it every time. You don't have mute power. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, Bush. Oh, <laughs> now you're muted. <laughs> yeah, it happens, man. Just live with it. It's okay. Yeah, no one cares what you're gonna say. I'll drink to you, Maddie Bush. <laughs> I was just gonna, I was gonna say, let's not forget losing to Jermel Charlo is not a bad thing. This guy's great. But we didn't get the fight we wanted to see. That was like a first round knockout. And like, if you could get up and say the round ends, move on to round two, we probably would have got twelve but rounds look, out of them guys. Yeah, but Eric has been, he's been learning. He's like 22 years old when he got knocked out. But Jermel was like 24, 25 years old too. Yeah, but Jermel's a freak of nature. So is so are you, the buddy. hammer. I'm a freak of nature too. So yeah. you're a freak of nature too. I'd like All to see right, that, now. I'd like I'm to cutting you, you off now. Mute that guy. All right, Done. I'm cutting everybody. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, make sure to put that in post too. Uh, that's it for news this week. Uh, we, as I said, we had a lot of news to hit too. I think we did it very good. We got some uh, reviews coming up from our predictions last week to hit, and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, move on with the show now. All right, Brews and Reviews time. Uh, I don't have it written down what our predictions were, so you guys can just tell me if you got it right or not. I know I didn't get a few of these right, but uh, we're going to get through it anyway here. Uh, Eubank and, uh, versus uh, Williams. As uh, James put it in the notes of the show, Vomit. <laughs> James explained <laughs> the vomit portion of this uh, the review of the fight. Uh, I will do that. Um, if you want to know our predictions, you just have to watch uh, the end of last show uh, to figure that stuff out. Um, but yeah, vomit. This was just a terrible fight. Um, Eubank did not seem like he was taking this seriously. It, it was, uh, if you didn't know, Eubank Jr. is being trained by Roy Jones Jr., or at least he was for this fight. And this looked like Eubank was a. Uh, I don't know, man, like a, like a Chinese copy of Roy Jones Jr. And he was just arrogant and just didn't. It was really disappointing that he wasn't taking this seriously. I think his dad even looked on the sideline like, what are you doing, kid? But Williams is always pressing forward. Uh, Eubank popped him quite a few times, uh, knocked him down four times in the fight. Williams never really got, you know, off his guard. He kept. He just kept coming forward the entire fight for the entire fight. But it was just, man, Eubank was, you're going to have to watch it. It made me upset. Like you're just clowning around and just not, not taking it seriously. And if you're not giving any respect to Liam Williams, that's fine. But at that point, just put him out of his misery. If you're really going to be like that, like it doesn't, it didn't make much sense. Hands down a lot, a lot of, a lot of this, a lot of trying to do the Roy Jones uh, shake and shuffle uh, to, to pop him in the head, and it just didn't – you're not Roy Jones, man. You're Chris Eubank Jr., and uh, right now you ain't nothing. So um, it didn't seem like a very good uh, good fight for me. He did win, um, obviously, very convincingly on the cards as well um, because of all the knockdowns, but um, all it would have taken is one time he gets caught in that fight. There was a point where he was dancing literally on the side, and Williams stopped and looked at the ref and went – well, at that point, if I was Williams, I would have came up there and popped him in the. I would have just ruled him. But whatever, man. British fighters. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. British fighters. But yeah, super disappointing. Uh, don't watch it. I guess I just told you to watch it. Don't watch it. It's don't watch it. Well, those <laughs> the first three knockdowns too were like in the first three rounds too, weren't they? There was like uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah, they were pretty quick, and it As wasn't. Like, they weren't yeah. anything crazy either. It was just like, yeah. but you never went in oh. for the kill ever after getting the knockdown. Was, no. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, Filthy Rich, you are a Roy Jones Jr. fan. Uh, what did you think of this uh, this uh, Chinese copy, as James put it? I don't know this. what I thought, but uh, yes, I think we're all Roy Jones Jr. fans. <laughs> or what's next for Chris Eubank Jr. after this? Does he st- keep with this kind of style, or is he? Uh, where does he go from here? Look, uh, I mean, th- this there is something about uh, show and tell kind of thing, like. Uh, Adrian Broner's the king of this. Like, people are going to buy fights to see you get knocked out. And, and like, Mayweather, I think, is the same kind of way. So, if Eubank wants to take that route, uh, go right ahead. It's your career, man. Do what you got to do. If you can make a dollar at the end of the day, go ahead and do it. Now, 
what is next for you bank it's not canelo like we're at 168 it's not canelo not anytime soon the biggest fight the biggest like money fight you're gonna make right now chris eubank jr is a rematch with billy joe saunders i got a few names here but billy joe saunders is the number one name saunders is coming off an eye socket injury uh you might win this time so uh it's a big uk showdown so go ahead and do that the other couple names I have here guys that he could probably beat or maybe he just matches up well with them and they both have fights coming up soon uh Danny Jacobs I think that'd be a good fight and like someone like Gabe Rosado I think that would make a good fight as well interesting interesting uh so yeah I, I was gonna ask you if he was doing all the showboating stuff to try to get Canelo but you know that Canelo's not gonna fall for that kind of crap all the time right and that, that's all dependent too Billy Joe Saunders decides not to retire what's next for uh, liam williams there uh uh maddie uh, bush uh he was kind of embarrassed in that fight but he did at least he kept in it at least the entire way what, what do you think yeah, he's a tough guy uh he's got horrible footwork horrible balance and that's why he kept getting knocked down from them jabs as he came in because he had horrible balance as he came in to establish his work and that's why he kept getting caught by like the best thing I've heard tonight is James saying the Chinese version of Roy Jones Jr. Like, <laughs> like, like I really like. He's not even Chinese. <laughs> no, no, no. Like he's saying like the knockoff, and you know what? It's never as good as the original. You know, it's like like it was like the perfect analogy. He just kept catching. You know, Liam Williams is like he's just head down, come forward, tough, tough fighter. Yeah, I'll give him that credit because any man who steps in there, I respect, but. He just kept getting caught off balance. Um, where does he go from here, Liam Williams? Um, honestly, he's tough. He can throw. Depends on the style of fight. Maybe for him, how about this? Because there's a fight coming up here against uh, Ryder and Jacobs. Whoever loses that fight fights Williams. Oh, that's an idea. I like it. I do. James doesn't like it, but uh, Filthy Rich likes it. So, uh, I guess Filthy Rich will drink to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Richie. I'll, hey, hey, we'll drink together. Let's do it. Yeah, there you go. All right, next thing we're going to review is uh, Quadros. Uh, former champion Quadros was trying to regain uh, being a champion uh, in that division, trying to get his name back out there with the likes of Chocolatito, Sarangasai, and all them. But he uh, was fighting a Rodriguez who uh, knocked him out. So what do you think, Rich? Well, or uh, didn't knock him out. Knocked him, beat him, beat him pretty convincing. Anyway, Matt, it's your review. Quadra. I'm confusing uh, my fights in my head. I'm sorry, Quadra. All right, well, well, if you haven't watched it, Quadras versus Bam Rodriguez, go watch Bam. it. Bam! Please, please go, please go watch it because it, it is one of the more entertaining fights I've seen in quite a bit. And, you know, I know a lot of – not a lot of shine gets put to these guys at the lighter weights, but you know what? Go watch this fight, please, and – and reevaluate what you think about these guys at lighter weights because it was a hell of a fight. Um, honestly, a man coming up from 108 pounds on short notice, taking the fight, and I'm talking about Bam Rodriguez against an established one-time champion, Quadras, or maybe two-time. I don't know. Quadras has been in the game for a long time, but he's only 33. James, I might be wrong. Might be right. I don't know. Sounds all right. But, you know. But, I mean, Quadras is no slouch. He's a great fighter. He's been around for a long time. And this young man, 22 years old, from Robert Garcia's gym, comes up and puts on a show. I watched a, a guy with footwork at a young age move in and out, throw in angles that Quadras didn't even see coming, a crafty vet. Uh, there was uppercuts. There were lefts. It, it was... It was a beautiful thing to watch. And he even had a little dog in him, too, where uh, Bam would actually catch and shoot on punches. Like, he'd take one to give one, but he's catching and shooting. And honestly, like, I was so impressed with this young man. I will watch every fight that he ever fights in, even if he goes down back in weight or if he stays up here. Anything, I recommend anyone watching this, you go watch Bam Rodriguez fight, and you will be happy. And... I think he's he's the future at that weight and all around that weight. And you know what? He's so young, he will move up into the bigger echelons. And uh, I think you're going to be – we'll be saying his name for a long time to come, honestly. 
All right. Rich, what's next for Quadras after this fight? Uh, he was a former champion. Doesn't seem to be able to be, compete with these guys at this level anymore, though. What, what, what's next from him? Is, uh, does he get back in there with Estrada or not? The um, third fight with Estrada? Uh, yeah, so look, uh, yeah, Quadras is probably done. He can't beat a guy coming up two weights. That does not look good. I think his career is about over. If he's 33 years old, that, that's pretty old. So at this point, uh, make your money and get out while you can. The easy answers here are someone like Chocolatito, Sarung, uh, Sarung Vasai, and Estrada. Those are like the three biggest names, the three easiest names. Uh, get your money and run. Yeah, basically you're becoming a gatekeeper, don't you think? Brian Valoria, what's he doing these days? Uh, He's training. The same, thing, same thing we're doing, <laughs> I think. <Yeah. laughs> James, what's next for Rodriguez after that? Does he get to jump into the top three there with Sorin Vasai, Estrada, and uh, um, and uh, who did I forget? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, yes. Drinking too hard, yes. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. First of all, Sorin Vasai was supposed to fight Quadros for this fight, all right? This is the guy who backed out because of COVID. Quadros is not going to drop. I don't believe Quadros is going to drop down. He threw like 300 more punches than Bam Rodriguez, man. Bam Rodriguez is just a phenom, and he got caught at the wrong time, right? Anyway, what's next for Bam Rodriguez, right? Jesse Rodriguez came up and wait. This dude is going to be able to do whatever he wants, probably from 108 to 118 for a while. He can If he can literally, literally come up to two weight classes and fight Quadros and do what he did, no division is safe right now, right? If he gets the only problem he's going to come up is when he comes up to 118, that's when the big stuff happens, is when it's like Inoue and Denair. Um, But I think he cleans out 108. I think he yes. cleans out 112. Yes. At this point, 115, he's going to have some some problems if they're still around, like Estrada, Strong Vasai, and Gonzalez. But I mean, for me, biased <laughs> he's probably going to have his biggest test against uh Chaco Tito but I mean this kid is a shining star and I think at this point it's whoever's going to give him the chance at another title is what he's going to do whether it's at 108 112 115 at this point he has so the saying, ability to float so so you're saying Rodriguez has arrived oh yes oh yeah he oh arrived. yeah I, I mean I'll just say this real quick all right he does he sidesteps and punches to the effect of a Lomachenko-esque uh, footwork. All right. Not quite That's there all I'm yet, saying. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yep. Yeah. Would it be like a Chinese copy of it? <laughs> no, 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 no. But James, yeah, he is, that's well, what I got. He, he is James, the youngest. Well put. He's the youngest champion in boxing right now. Yep. I think he's 20 years old. I'll drink to that. 22. Sweet. Uh, no, yep. he's right. The kid, the kid, the kid, the kid, the kid's gonna be great. He's really gonna be great. It is great. All right, last fight we gotta talk about. My nickname's not the kid. Oh, Ray Griffey Jr., baby. <laughs> Sorry, Raider. Continue. All right, uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> our last, uh, our last fight here: Thurman versus Barrios. Uh, Barrios uh, didn't have any roid rage during this fight. Uh, apparently, uh, didn't click in. Uh, Thurman, Thurman, German, Thurman, German uh, took over the fight for the most part. I did have the over, which was good. I did have Barrios, which was not good. So, uh, Rich, why don't you review this fight for us? So, I did mention last week, uh, I'm a little, I wouldn't say embarrassed about it, but I did say boxing is a disgusting, corrupt sport. Uh, and Thurman would win on points or at indecision but Thurman controlled this fight the entire way now part of that could be because uh Barrios is moving up from 140 taking on uh, maybe a top maybe a top guy at 147 we don't know if Keith at this point we don't know if Keith Thurman was a top guy at 147 so I mean, me and James will always butt heads on this, but when you move up in weight, you don't go after the top guy right away. Even with uh, Rodriguez, I would not want to step in the ring with anybody. Take some easy fights. But back to Barrios and Thurman. Thurman looked really good. He looked really dominant. He deserved probably 12 out of 12 rounds. I know he lost one round on someone's scorecard there, but... <coughs> Keith Thurman against a guy moving up from 140. 
I almost feel like he was expected to do that, but uh, I, I see big fights for Keith Thurman on the way. I feel like he's called out Crawford. I think he wants some of boots. I think he wants a lot of guys. I don't know how he handles them guys, but uh, Keith Thurman looks very dominant. I'm not saying you're miss- missing much here, but there's probably some other fights you'd want to watch first before you watch Keith Thurman beat up on uh, uh, Mario Barrios. Boots kills him. Anyway, uh, is Thurman back, Matt? What's next for him here? Uh, he kind of touched on it a little bit here, but what do you think is next for uh, Thurman? Thurman, um, honestly, yeah, I was impressed after that long of a layoff. The ring rust, he claimed he didn't have ring rust because he knocked it off in the gym. But, you know, he'd been out for, I don't know, almost three years. I don't know how long it was with injuries and all this. He had gone up in weight. Now he, he looked great in the weigh-in. And I was like, okay, all right. I want to see how he looks in the ring. And he looked he looked great. And it was a good fight for him to take right away. He needs one more fight because, you know what, he's so susceptible to taking body shots still to this time. Barrios rocked him with a body shot. And it, Thurman was visibly hurt from it from a smaller man. If he can get over that, I think Thurman is still one of the more dangerous fighters in the world at his weight division. One more, one more fight to knock off the rust and he's ready for the top names. Like I'm just done. So who, yeah. So who is, like who, is who is the name? Yeah, all that. <laughs> well, well, they're, they're, well, they're, they're, they're talking. They wanted, they wanted Thurman Crawford. Cause obviously we ain't going to get Spence, who but do I don't want, want I don't want Thurman to fight Crawford yet. I want Thurman to have one more fight. And uh, who would I want him in there? It's, you know, a lighter name, a natural guy at that weight. I don't know who it would be at this point. Whoever is not signed to a fight right now, I think Thurman beats a lot of guys. Thurman's a, he's, he's a gamer. You don't don't beat boots. You don't beat boots. I, I, okay, what, yeah, yeah, Boots, we, you know, he's unproven. He's never been in with a Thurman. Thurman is a true champion, all right? That fights every how three this? years. Hey, how, about, <laughs> hey, hey, how about this? How about this? Gary how Russell about, Jr. How about, he, how, about, how about he dusts them boots off and takes boots out next before Ooh. he gets Thurman? Or brilliant, right. brilliant. He, du- he, he dusts Dust them boots before he takes, before he takes on Terrence off. Crawford. Yeah. Oh Mute this God. man. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. After that, I, I had to open up another beer. Uh, what do you, well, James? What's next for uh, the steroid king Barrios? Uh, is it another yeah. failed drug test coming up here, or what is it? <laughs> yeah, I just give him the steroid king. He's just not in Nevada, yeah. and don't be <laughs> don't be tarnishing the man. Yeah. Um, I don't know who. I'm still trying. He to lost twelve who, rounds. I'll tarnish him all. I'm trying to figure out who Keith <laughs> Thurman's fighting next. I don't even know what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, we'll go on to Barrios. So Barrios. Um, yeah, unfortunately, man, he didn't he didn't really look that great. Um, I thought he was going to look a lot better coming up in weight. I thought he was maybe struggling to get to 140. That's why he had issues against Tank, and he came up against Thurman. And he did take a big, you know good body shot, but man, what's next to this man? Um, unfortunately, I, mean, I don't really want to say this because you're only 26, but I I think your ceiling's a gatekeeper, son. Um, and it's super unfortunate, but he has the, at least he has the time and the opportunity to turn it around. But if I were him, given how 147 is stacked, I would pop a 140. I'd go back to 140. Um, I would stay away from Taylor, um, but I would try to get probably one of the names, like a, I don't even want, I don't even know what I do against this, but like Pro Gray or Zapata, um, even a Jose Ramirez. Uh, but that's still a very dangerous fight. I mean, you can even pop like a, I mean, there's, uh, he goes down and he goes down and competes. He was a champion at 140 at one point. Pro Gray Zapata do that. Obviously, if Taylor vacates and goes up to 147, then um, maybe he has a chance at some belts. But th- those are the two names that I'd probably uh, put him up against uh, as I like, on fights. I like I that. Know. He's a gate- young age. He's a gatekeeper at 147. I like that. That's, he is. Oh, he doesn't I, like that. I'll tell you what, I, watching that fight, I think he needs a trainer change. Because that, I'll give you the answer. The answer is Adrian Broner for both guys. Oh, Adrian broker. can't figure out a way. <laughs> he can promote a fight by himself. I'd like to He's see Adrian get... Broner against Keith Thurman and Adrian Broner against uh, Mario Barrios. There's your answer. I'll drink to me, boys. Fucking Broner's, <laughs> Broner, 
Broner's in jail more than I am. Come on. It's hard for him. So he to needs play. the money. He'll take it. He ain't got no money. <laughs> <laughs> he can't even afford the super size of Subway. I mean, he can't even do that. You know? Remember, he, only, he told the judge he has $12. <laughs> Pacquiao, oh Pacquiao beat Thurman and beat uh, – and be Broner. So I think the two of them need to go at it to see who, <laughs> who's the best know, guy to lose to Pacquiao. Whatever. Yeah, you figure it out, man. <laughs> That's funny. He needs a trainer. Barrios needs a trainer change. I'll tell you that because he just did not look good. Like he, he didn't adjust at all. I, he doesn't. He needs to slow his way into 147. Don't. T- I mean, yeah, Keith Thurman needed some dusting off there, but like. I don't, Just know. I don't know. Yeah. Move any slowly. He one good but... body shot, but I, I had him losing 12 rounds. I think so 140. I, I think he belongs at 140. I'm with James yeah. on this. Yeah. I had him losing 12 rounds. Uh, you said the body shot, maybe one over a round, but man, I don't think so. I, I, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's why. Yes, I'm talking about you. Yes, go ahead. 30 seconds. You know, like Bar- Barrios lost to Gervonta Davis. That's not a bad thing. And he gave a good fight. He took Gervonta, Dev- Dev- so yeah, he should go back down to 140. He could do damage at 140 still. Barrios, yeah. I'm talking. I agree. Like, yeah, like, that's why I said it. Yeah, he said mute him. Yeah, mute him. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man! Just don't come on. Take the Bush lattes and just relax a little bit. <laughs> Matty Bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, are the mountains? Oh, that's Coors Light. I was gonna say, are the mountains mm-hmm. blue? <laughs> that's Coors Light. All right, that's our reviews for our show or our our shows, our picks last week. Uh, I think if you looked at, it, I think Rich did the best on them. Uh, but you're gonna have to go back and add up math up yourself because me and James we like to go on the edge and like to take some underdogs from time to time, right, James? And then sometimes yeah. underdogs you're gonna lose some, but you're gonna win some some more too. So when you hit. All right, that's our reviews for this week. Uh, Let's go ahead and move on with the show. All right, that's our show. We got to get it rocking and rolling out of here before James finds a uh, wet floor sign to knock us all out with here. But (laughs) Filthy Rich, why don't you bring us on home? I just want to give a birthday shout out to follower, friend of the show. Happy 40th birthday at Brooms 35. He's liked a few of our stuff. Huge boxing fan. Gets his boxing news from Bruise and Boxing. I'll drink to you, Kirk. So he gets, the, he gets the right news. That's right. right yeah, on. happy birthday. So if Kirk's watching us, where can he listen to us as James? And if he's uh, listening to us, where can he watch us? Well, if he's listening to us and he wants to watch us, he can go to YouTube backslash Bruise and Boxing. Uh, and if he's watching us and wants to listen to us instead, um, he can go to any major podcast site and just type us in. He'll find us ASAP. Or talk to Alexa and say, Alexa, play Bruce and Box. No, I forgot about that. You can't oh, do you that. forget about that, that. and yeah. the Google Home thing. Yeah, it works. I, it, I've done it. It's cool. It does work. <laughs> said, it does. It's cool. Uh, they're always listening to you. All right, uh, Matty Bush, you have a moment of Zen quote to bring us out on, or what? Well, I got called like three, four different names tonight throughout the show, and uh, this goes out to James. This is a cold call. <laughs> That guy needs to chill out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. For Judge Jimmy James, Matty Ice, Matty Bush, whatever the hell we're calling them now, and Filthy Rich, I am Raider Live. We will see you guys next week. Beam! (laughs) 